Hi there, this is Jenny from the Sewing Palace in Helena, Montana. Today I'm going to show you some home decorating projects using the technique of fabric collage. Let's get started. Fabric collage is simply cutting different shapes out of fabric and layering them to create a secondary shape. Typically you'll use a fabric glue of some sort in order to layer the layers so that they adhere. The last step you can apply some quilting or stitching to hold all the layers down. The two projects that we're going to be showing today is a little wine glass called Vino by Laura Heine. And she's in Billings, Montana, so shout out to Laura. And then the second project that we'll be showing is from McKenna Ryan, and this is her new uh, collection, and it's called Blooms of Inspiration. So we have kits available for both of them, and I'm going to show you the techniques. The next thing you want to think about is the fabrics. You can certainly purchase a kit, which we have one for Vino and for Love behind me, so you could do that. I do want to introduce McKenna Ryan's fabrics that she has just come out with, and they're right here. They're called Vintage Farmhouse. They're from Hoffman Fabrics, and they are digitally printed, so the clarity is beautiful. The hand feels luxurious, so they're very, very soft, so there are lots of textures. She has several wood grain textures. She has birch bark this is a light wood grain there's a charcoal wood grain there's birch bark in various colors she's also got some variegated so it goes from light down to a darker color so that you can get different shades of something to really get some nice contrast she also has uh, beautiful background textures that you can use for the back of something and teals and purples and just really rich colors so those could be great background fabrics for a very subtle look. You could also uh, select some floral fabrics with lots of bright colors depending on what image you want to create. For my wine glass in particular, this one, uh, Vino from Laura Heine, you'll need some light colored background fabrics. You'll need something for the glass, which is maybe clear looking or a light color. She uses some newsprints. And then depending on what shade of wine you want, you'll have different shades of maybe red or pink or even a salmon color. And then for the bottle itself, generally those are green, so you'll need various shades of green and teal to create the contrast in the bottle. So the fabrics you'll just start collecting. You'll also need some glue, which the one in particular that I'm going to be using is called Light Steam Seam 2. It has paper on both sides and at a, a glue in the middle that is activated by heat. You can buy it by the yard or you can buy it by the package, like so. So you'll want some sort of glue option available for you so that you can adhere those layers. I'll show you kind of that technique here shortly. And then there are a couple other tools that are really helpful. Obviously an iron to adhere those colors and iron the glue onto the fabric. Some super sharp scissors. There's a designer, her name is Karen K. Buckley, and she made the coolest scissors ever. They're really nice, sharp to the point, micro serrated. And these I think are the medium um, absolute faves. She has another one that are green handled I really like. But these are great for cutting and cutting and cutting because that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be cutting lots of shapes out to create your collage. You'll need uh, some sort of pressing mat or an ironing board. Uh, you might need a little iron clean just in case. My favorite is a little tube. I think it's a Dritz tube. I'll try to find that for you and show that to you. And then applique pressing sheets. Lots of choices. There's Teflon sheets. There is a new product out there that is a wonderful pressing mat and you can see through it. It can withstand high heats. And I'll show you how this works here shortly. So fabrics, glue, um, a pattern or maybe a kit an iron oh and lastly you'll need some sort of fabric in regards to Laura Heine's patterns she frequently will use a really lightweight fabric to trace the pattern onto so today I'm going to be using a cotton batiste very lightweight hope you can see through it through the camera but you will be able to see through it when I show you a close-up for the pattern layout so a lightweight fabric and we'll go ahead and get started we're going to get started by making the table runner or the wall hanging here which is from McKenna Ryan we'll get started by making a wreath for the home wall hanging in this pattern from McKenna Ryan, there are lots of choices. Instead of using the home, you can do a lot of different choices. So she's got a really nicely included pattern for not only home, but you could also do 
love. You could do hope. Um, and she's got a well-written instruction. She's got the applique for the birds. Lots and lots of pieces are included. And you can see this is just one of three in this set. But you can see all those shapes are included for you to be able to cut and trace. You can also freely cut them since she has designed the fabric for the wreath. And so here are all the shapes broken down and you can trace them onto fusible web or you can freely cut them. But she's really done a nice job at creating this pattern for you to create a collage. So we'll get started getting some fabric. And I'm going to use her hydrangea fabric and put some fusible web on the back of it. I'll also create some accents with some of the leaves from this fabric that she created. So my step one is tracing the objects from the pattern if I choose to do that or ironing this to the back side and freehand cutting them out of the fabric. Let's just run through the steps if you were to trace your shapes onto fusible web. Again, this is light steam -a seam 2. There are several varieties available, but the one that I chose to use was light steam -a seam 2. There is paper on both sides, and when you pull away the paper, you'll have a sticky layer of glue that is sandwiched in between the paper. When you pull away the paper, you will still have paper on the other side. So what you'll do is the side that still has the glue attached, you will lay on your pattern and start tracing it. Here I have my floral motif and the fusible web pattern piece that I will be using to fuse onto the back. So I will flip this over I'll pull that one layer of paper away. Remember, there's still glue on one of those. And then you'll lay that on the back side of the fabric in the position that you want. The beauty about steam -a seam is you can apply it and it will stick. But I usually like a light tap of the iron to get that to really adhere. Let it cool and then cut it out. Using these Karen K. Buckley scissors, is a dream when you're cutting out these shapes. You can see there's lots of little angles and twists and getting a sharp pair of scissors to cut through not only paper but glue and fabric is really important to get your edges nice and clean. So you'll just continue to cut and then you'll start collecting those pieces so that you can create a collage. Now that you have a collection of collage pieces cut out using steam -a seam and your favorite fabrics, you will then use your applique pressing sheet. The sheet that I'm using today is called a Fusamat from Sharon Bradley. This is a really nice quality pressing sheet and it allows you to press onto it and it will take with high heats and then with fusible glue, it will not stick. So I have laid my pattern underneath so that I know where to place my pieces. And then I can see through this so that when I go to place my collage pieces, I can get them accurately placed where they're supposed to be. So then I will play with my collage, build my wreath, like so. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll start pulling off the paper and fusing it onto my project. So I'm going to start over here. My underlying layer here, I'm going to start with i peel off that paper and stick it down into place using the pattern lines that I can see through my pressing sheet. And then sometimes those pieces will be attached to each other by just maybe a few little threads of fabric or just a small little section of fabric. So when you do that, and you get all those laid, like this piece here, I'm going to tuck underneath, pulling off the paper first, and then that's going to attach those pieces so that they then become one large piece. So you're going to tuck all your shapes into a pleasing fashion to create your collage. Okay. 
I've got my collage started and I have a hot iron. It's laying on top of my pressing sheet and I'm just going to iron so that those pieces stick to each other and I apply enough heat and pressure until they stick to each other. Then I will let it cool and the beauty about the pressing sheet is once it's cool you can peel it off and it will behave as one piece then you can apply it to your background fabric. Now that I've created part of my collage, I can then place it onto my background fabric and iron it in place. After you've done that, with this project in particular, some stitching was done over top of the wreath using free motion techniques, and then some stitching with a contrasting thread down the wood grain of the fabric. And voila, you have a cute little wall hanging for your home decor. Let's look a little closely at the Vino pattern by Laura Heine. This pattern is written from the company called Fiberworks. They're located in Billings, Montana. And the wall hanging is 13 inches by 24, so it's a nice size for a kitchen or a gift and pretty simple to complete. She has a nice layout of the colors that you would need and the sizes. There's not large amounts of fabric, just nice variety. And she has great techniques for collage, which are a little different than I showed you. And you'll have to check out the pattern to learn those techniques. We have the kits available here at the shop, and I wanted to show you what those look like. They have lots of fabrics in there, and they're all labeled. Of course, you can add from your stash. So there's accents for the wine glass. Um, there's wine colors. There's little wine fabrics here that are a ver variety of shades of red. There's the table, binding, some green for the bottle, and lots of background fabrics to collage your background. Again, you can add some from your stash. I've added a couple of florals that I'm going to cut out and some newsprints that I like, just a little bit of accents for the glass. So start collecting your fabric and I'll show you the next step for tracing your pattern. Once you have your fabrics collected and lots of steam -a seam the pattern suggests four yards of 12 inch wide. So you wanna collect a lot of that. That will give you the nice variety to be able to collage uh, lots of different pieces. You'll take the pattern out, read over the instructions, which are well written. Again, her techniques for collage are a little bit different. So she's got those laid out in her pattern. But you will trace your pattern onto your cotton batiste or your lightweight fabric. So I have my fabric laying over top so you can see that it shows nicely through there. And then with a light hand, you're going to go around and trace that onto the cotton batiste. So it doesn't have to be exact on the money. The outside lines um, will help you. And then when you start creating your pieces of collage, then you'll know where to place them on this cotton batiste fabric. You'll collage this whole bottle and then I will show you the next steps uh, later on in the video for how to transfer this onto your background fabric. So let's take a look at one of these in process after it's been traced and the collage process has been started. So it's all been traced. We've got some pieces of fabric already collaged, the top of the bottle pouring into the glass and just some more accents to add. So I'll keep building this and you'll see a wine bottle come together beautifully. I've spent the last couple of evenings adding elements to my collage. I've got a full bottle that's all collaged and the wine pouring into the glass, a nice full glass of wine. And then of course my entire glass component is all collaged. You can always add more elements to this as you proceed, but at this point my outer edges are finished as regards to having fabric to the edge. And so I'm going to work my way around and cut this cotton batiste away. I will use the Karen K. Buckley scissors to trim that all out and get a nice even edge trimming away the cotton batiste. So this is your edge that will show on your background fabric. So you want to make sure you get a nice clean edge. And then there's a couple of products that you'll need for the next step. Clearly you'll need your background fabric and we're going to audition a few different backgrounds on the, with the wine glass. You'll also need a glue uh, 
adhesive of some sort to apply and that's going to be applied to the back of the cotton batiste and then it's going to tack down onto your project then the stitching will hold this collage piece onto the background so there's a couple of choices there is uh, Roxanne's glue based it that's the one that I'm going to use and it comes in a series of ways to apply it you can get it large this is kind of a medium size and then this is a smaller amount and for this wine glass this will be sufficient for this project you could also use the uh, fabric glue plan for, excuse me fabric glue pen from um, Soline. this has a kind of like a lipstick and there's a, a bit of glue on there and then one thing I also wanted to tell you about if you do get a little uh, fusible web on your iron this is the iron cleaner that I really like you it's kind of like a tube of toothpaste you squirt this onto a rag that you have at home like a terry cloth washcloth and that you don't mind getting dirty and you squirt this on there your irons hot and then you rub the iron onto it so this faultless iron cleaner is really great for when you make make a bit of a mess on your iron so you're going to just continue trimming around so that you have this one unit which is the glass con connected to the wine and the top of the bottle so trim away Now that you have your applique or your collage already and cut out, what you're next going to do is audition background fabrics. When you decide on a background fabric, you'll then take the uh, glue and dab little dot, dots of glue around the outer edge of your collage piece. And then you'll apply it to your background and stitch it down. You can use an all over stitch on Laura's pattern she did a grid pattern quilting to hold everything down you could also add embellishment and free motion stitching in the glass or around the edges of the bottle don't forget you also have the opportunity to add more collage uh, her background is very nicely done it is all collaged in the kit you have lots of light colored background fabrics and instead of collaging it I decided to patchwork it so I just sewed a bunch of the pieces together and that's what I was going to do for my background. Then you'll audition what tables you'd like. This really pretty grunge fabric is in the kit. And your collage will sit on your background with the table. And then that will be that. So I'm just at that tricky part of deciding what to do for my background. I have decided that the piece that I made is just too linear and I don't really care for it. Uh, but I do like the table. There are lots of choices for the table. So I might darken the table with more of a charcoal color. Just lots of choices. So here's another background idea. Here's a different table. And then yet I have another background here. The next step is uh, sewing the background together, putting the applique glue on the back of the collage and holding it down and then quilting it to finish it off.